Adam Stern at the Sports Business Journal dropped a massive bomb on the NASCAR world yesterday. So let's break down the report of NASCAR's top Cup Series teams running races without NASCAR's involvement today on Shifting Gears. I'm Alan Bailey, and before we get started, make sure you smash the subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest videos and log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com for the latest motorsports news, ARN, the Motorsports Authority. You can go ahead and read the full article on Sports Business Journal's website right now or at the link in the description. Stern is reporting that the management company has, quote, been hired to explore exhibition race opportunities both domestically and internationally via a request for information proposal, unquote. Oh boy, this is a can of worms, and this is bad for NASCAR. Well, more specifically, it's bad for the NASCAR organization. Let's actually break this on down. Now, does this mean that we could necessarily see exhibition-style races sometime in 2023? Maybe. Maybe this is something that happens in 2024, but the fact that this is happening at all is worrisome if I'm NASCAR. We already talked about it on a program earlier this season that there was a lot of tension between the Race Team Alliance, or the RTA, and NASCAR itself. The Race Team Alliance organization is essentially comprised of NASCAR team owners, and they more or less act as a liaison between the team owners and NASCAR when it comes to negotiations such as contracts with television networks, etc. And there's certainly a lot of friction going on between NASCAR and the race teams right now, and there's certainly a lot of friction between NASCAR and the actual drivers, and there's basically friction between NASCAR and everyone right now. The current TV contract will be up at the end of the 2024 season, and negotiations with NASCAR and the television networks is going to seriously start at the beginning of the 2023 season, and presumably last until 2024. Does this mean that NASCAR teams are essentially going to form their own version of NASCAR? Honestly, maybe. That could be where this is headed, although I certainly doubt it, because these race teams are in the race team business. But NASCAR needs to acknowledge that these team owners make their living off of NASCAR, and that without these cup teams, there is no NASCAR. Now, a lot of people are speculating, well, you just take the current cup cars and you essentially just go to another track and do it yourself without NASCAR officials. Pump the brakes. That is certainly not what could happen. As it was spelled out in the Sports Business Journal article, NASCAR teams have certain rules that they have to abide by as part of the charter agreement with the sanctioning body, and those include not starting competing racing series. That agreement runs through 2024, however, it appears that the teams feel they have a legal standing to do some form of exhibition races as long as they compete in non-NASCAR race cars and branded apparel. In other words, essentially the race teams have to start from scratch, and I mean that literally. They cannot use the current NASCAR next-gen car. Now, does that mean that they could use the Gen 6 car? Potentially, I don't know the legal ramifications of that, but that is certainly a possibility. The Gen 6 car was the car up until the beginning of the 2022 season, and frankly, those cars are essentially collecting dust. Yes, they don't have the fleet of 40 or 50 cars per team like they used to, but there are still some of those cars lying around. Those cars potentially could be repurposed and remodified in order to basically get away with it legally, but even that is skating on thin ice. NASCAR teams will have to essentially go out and find non-NASCAR sanctioned tracks in order to race on. That is an extraordinarily high bar to cross, because most racetracks in the United States and in North America are NASCAR sanctioned tracks. So it is a possibility that we could see this organization go north or south of the border to a non-NASCAR sanctioned track, but those odds are extraordinarily low because typically NASCAR sanctioned tracks have all of the equipment and the facilities that NASCAR teams need in order to race. If you go to a track anywhere in the country that isn't a NASCAR sanctioned track, chances are safety features and amenities at that track aren't going to be up to NASCAR standards and will need to be heavily modified by this new organization in order to put a race on there. That's another tall order. 
Another one is the fact that the current Cup Series drivers will have to be paid separately from what they're getting paid to run in the Cup Series. The contracts that most NASCAR Cup Series drivers have state that they race in the NASCAR Blank Series, whether it's the NASCAR Cup Series, Xfinity, or Craftsman Truck Series next season. Essentially, these teams will have to pay them under the table or come up with a new contract altogether. And frankly, the contract that they signed with those teams might prohibit that. Now, yes, if Kyle Larson, for instance, wants to race in the NASCAR Cup Series for Rick Hendrick, and Rick Hendrick wants Kyle Larson to race in whatever this new series will be, even if it's for an exhibition race here or there, Rick Hendrick is still going to have to pay Kyle Larson a separate fee in order to do this. That's a lot of money out of Rick Hendrick's pocket. Well, they have sponsors. That's no big deal, you might say, right? Eh, wrong. Try again. Because sponsors that are sponsoring the NASCAR Cup Series are tied to those race organizations for those races. It's a completely separate thing. So NASCAR teams will have to go out there and find other sponsors to race in this series or in these exhibition races. Those mean more contract negotiations and that frankly means double the work for everyone at these cup teams. That's a lot of work altogether. But let me throw a logistic problem at you. Who's going to be the track staff and officials at the racetrack? Yeah, even if these NASCAR teams decide, oh, we're only gonna do one or two exhibition races in the 2024 season or the 2025 season, well, you're gonna have to have in the neighborhood of at least, at least 50 to 150 officials to work the track, depending on how big the track is, depending on how many teams actually show up for this exhibition race. That's a lot of people you have to go out and find, train, and organize. And you have to have people in charge of this. Another monkey wrench, where's this going to be held? And I don't mean what racetrack are they going to go to, I mean, where are we going to be able to watch it? The Race Team Alliance will essentially have to go out and negotiate with current TV partners or other TV partners to actually broadcast whatever this exhibition series is going to be called. I'm all for more racing. I really am. But frankly, the RTA separating themselves from NASCAR is really, 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 really bad. Do I think that this is inevitably going to lead to a boycott? Honestly, yeah, this potentially could. Because if every single one of the Cup teams decides we're not going to show up to Daytona this season, guess what? There will be no Daytona 500, period. What's NASCAR going to do? Essentially throw Xfinity cars on the track and say, this is the Cup Series now, love these drivers. Not necessarily. So realistically, because of all those factors, I don't see the Race Team Alliance and NASCAR Cup teams actually pulling this off in 2023 and probably not even in 2024, maybe 2025, if they actually get all their ducks in a row very quickly. But even then, they're skating on very thin ice legally with NASCAR. And are these cup teams, Hendrick Motorsports, Joe Gibbs Racing, Penske, actually going to go out there and threaten their entire organization and relationship with NASCAR just to put on one or two races? I highly, highly doubt it. In NASCAR's defense, yes, there is a lot of very high costs when running a racetrack. I know that from experience because I happen to work extraordinarily closely with the management staff at Orange Show Speedway in San Bernardino, California. Heck, I am one of the management staff, and I'm not exactly going to open our books and show you all the costs that goes into maintaining a racetrack, but I will tell you this. It's extremely expensive, and insurance alone is astronomical. There is a lot behind running a racetrack. So I do sympathize with NASCAR in that sense, but I do not think that what the race teams are asking for is out of the realm of possibility. I think that the pie definitely needs to get bigger, meaning that NASCAR as an organization needs to ask for more money from its TV partners, but NASCAR also needs to make the sport more accessible. I'm sorry, but running races on the Law & Order rerun channel is not going to grow the sport, it's killing the sport. NASCAR needs to start looking into streaming, maybe even creating its own streaming service, and putting every single race practice session and qualifying session 
on that service live with the same graphics, with the same broadcast staff and officials working those broadcasts. That's what Formula One does, and it's worked out pretty damn well for them. NASCAR needs to get with the times. I'm sorry, no one has Peacock. It's confusing as hell, and NASCAR needs to go where its fans are, not ask its fans to come find them, because that truly has not worked out well for them. I hope that this dies out. I hope that this story goes absolutely nowhere, but honestly, this is starting to feel like the split that we saw in Open Wheel years ago, and it's feeling a lot like that. And I truly hope that this doesn't mean a lockout, but it feels like that's where it inevitably will lead if NASCAR and the RTA slash the cup teams can't actually come to an agreement on splitting the pie. Yes, the pie needs to expand, but it also needs to be divided more equally because at this point, cup teams, big cup teams that are worth millions of dollars are losing millions of dollars a year even when they go out and win the championship. That is not okay. It's a broken business model that needs to drastically change. I hope that everybody can come to an agreement. I hope that this can work out in everyone's favor, but honestly, this is about to get extremely ugly before it gets better for NASCAR. But I want to hear from you. What do you think about the possibility of the RTA Race Team Alliance slash NASCAR Cup teams forming their own racing organization slash holding exhibition races? Let me know in the comments down below. It could end up on the show. You can also help support the channel for free by hitting the subscribe button, liking this video, and sharing it on your social media accounts. It means so much to us, so thank you so, so much. You can also follow me on social media at Hey Alan Bailey and log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. Thank you so much for watching. For Shifting Gears, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.